I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ears, the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever Hey everybody, Lady Cheryl here, and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. In this episode, I'm going to share four major things with you. I'm going to share with you how I deal with an aphid infestation, and I give you all the signs to look for to know that you have that situation. And then I'm going to share with you, and it might be out of order, I'm going to share with you how blessed I am that... Five of my apple trees out of eight survived a three degree temperature last February. And I was really hurt when I lost three apple trees. But God has blessed me so much, guys. And I'm going to share an apple with you and compare and contrast it with the apples that I'm usually used to getting and let you see how super large it is. I'm just happy. And then I'm going to share with you how Brian and I, he came over after his swimming lesson, and we harvested some elderberries, okay, and washed them. And the last part, I'm going to share with you how I extract the juice. Now, in my future video, I'm going to share with you how I'm going to make the syrup and talk about the healthy benefits and that type of stuff. But in this video, I'm going to discuss those four things that I just mentioned, okay? Let's get started. Magnify this so that you can see the aphids close up. When you see a lot of ants crawling around, examine your plants. And in this case, it's a uh, pear tree that's loaded with aphids. Now I'm gonna tell you something. I could blast them with water, but I'm cutting this tree down about right here. Anyway, aphids will attack the tender young leaves. And that's what they did right there. When you see your leaves curling, curling leaves and ants will let you know you got an aphid infestation. First one of this year. So I can spray this with water, but I'm not. I'm just gonna take the leaf off and put it in uh, the trash. I'll cut it off about right there. You see those aphids? They're not hardly moving, but they're alive. A lot of them. I'm glad they were just in one area and you can see the ants are climbing all over because they eat the honeydew solution or excretion. It's real sweet and ants love that. And so they will farm the aphids and try to protect them, but that's a lot of aphids. Now I'm gonna blast the water on um, the rest of the tree, but the major part is gone. The major part of the infestation is okay, gone. Okay, guys, so you can see that's much better. Let's go to the top. I had planned to do that in the fall or the winter, but sometimes you do what you have to do when you have to do it. <laughs> All right. So I felt something crawling on my arm. That's an aphid, guys. That's why I like to come out first thing in the morning. Then when I finish my work, I jump in the shower because you never know what you're bringing in the house. To make sure that I've got all the aphids, what I'm going to do next is to just blast them with a strong force of water. Because I'm going to tell you guys, I used to spray my trees. Even before I became an organic gardener, I would try different products and chemicals that would burn the leaves. And I just realized one day, let me just spray some water on it and see what happens. And then... By trying that, I found out that spraying them with a, a strong force of water would drown them. And they didn't come back. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm going all around the neighboring fig tree and the two pear trees. 
and even the small containers that I have resting on the cement bed to shade those plants somewhat. I'm going around the back and I'm just spraying a lot of water. Okay. And I'm sure it's going to work. We'll end the infestation. Okay, guys. I've had this tree for three years. It's in the ground here, as you can see. And I'm getting a little nervous because this apple is huge. It has nothing but comfrey fertilizer twice a year. Brian, you want to do the honors and cut it off? I'm, a, I'm getting nervous because, oh, I got it. I'm getting nervous because it is so big that I don't want anything to eat it or peck on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Ryan sunburned from the trip. Yeah. But anyway, that, that apple is huge. It's huge. I'm going to put a quarter by it later so I can let you all compare it. It's two small apples confined. No, it's not two small apples confined or joined. It's just one apple. Oh. This tree is just doing very well in the ground. And going forward, I'm only going to grow what grows well for me. Just because it says it grows well in your area on these sites doesn't mean it's going to grow well for you. Because we get a lot of rain uh, April, May, June. And we had unseasonably cold temperatures in February, three degrees. This apple tree survived where a lot of them didn't. So I'm only going to grow what grows well going forward. Okay. Guys, I can hardly get this mesh bag off of here. I guess I'm going to have to get some bigger bags next year. Whoa, day. That is a huge apple. I am... <laughs> I hope you can feel my excitement because I certainly am excited. This apple is huge. I will tell you what it tastes like when we taste sample it. But for right now, uh, Brian, can you look over there and find me something like a penny or a quarter on my desk so that I can compare and contrast the size? This is a golden delicious apple that I purchased from Stark Brothers Bare Root three years ago. The first year I grew it in a container and the second year I put it in the ground. Who, who would have thought I'd get you? Oh yeah, oh baby hell. I got some elderberries, I got some elderberries, and they're changing colors and getting bigger. I got some elderberries, elderberries, I'm gonna make some syrup for your immune system and colds. Medicine in the garden. Okay guys, Brian and I are gonna harvest some of these berries, these elderberries today, the ones that are real black, or oh, I should say real dark. The reason why we're going to harvest them because the uh, birds are eating them, and I've got to have my berries. Okay, so that's a gorgeous cluster. Brian, you want to get the container? Yeah. We're going to put them in there. I'll just guess face down. And I'm going to cut another one, Brian, right here. And you're going to try to catch it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to hold it there, right there. You see it? Yeah. Put your, get your fingers out the way so I can cut it. Slide your fingers up some. Okay, now I'm getting ready to cut it. You hold it tight, okay? Okay. Oh, I should have got pruners. Good job, Brian. Put, uh-uh, put it with the next one. Uh-uh, put it with the same one. Okay. Right there. Go ahead and push it all over the inside. Put them all inside. Okay. No, pick it up and put them all inside. I got to wash those very so that people see. Now, you see this one? This one is really cool. These are super duper dark and rich and lovely. Okay? So, um, when you get a hold of it, I'm going to lean the branch towards you, hold it like I showed you, and then I'll cut. Okay? Okay? okay. Great job. Keep it in that position, and then I'm going to cut. And I'm not going to cut you, sweetie. Whoa! Show everybody. 
Whoa. Some of them aren't right, but the majority of them are, and we can't take that chance. Okay, put them on top of there. Try to get them all inside of there so I can take them in the house and wash them. Hold this one right here so I can cut it. Okay. Hold it. Okay. Wow, let's see. Let everybody Ooh. see. Hold them up, babe. Okay, grab them like so. And then hold it like that. Okay? Put it in the other bucket. I found another one we're going to harvest right here. This is so wonderful, guys. I will give you all the benefits of the elderberries when I make the syrup. I'm going to make two types. One that you will refrigerate and the other one you will not have to. Okay, you want to hold this, sweetie? Yeah. Put them all together like a cluster. Yes. Look at those. We don't worry about the green ones. Okay? Oh, wow. Now, look at here, Brian. You dropped two at once. Yeah. Look right here, Brian. This is an awesome one. See it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Look at those. Those are nice. And we're going to try to study this. I'm going to cut right there. And then let me see it. You always show you. YouTubers, what you cutting? Good job, Brian. Go ahead. You can put that away. Okay. There's another one right here. It has some green on it, but it's okay. We got a lot of them that are not green. And the birds will get them overnight. Okay? And I mean, guys, we have plenty more. We have one hiding over here. Brian, yeah. look over here inside of this jujube tree it it is loaded it's loaded but thorns are on here so i'm just gonna let you come over here and videotape because i don't want you to get pricked you see it you got it yeah yeah go in closer i'm gonna try to hold it and cut it at the same time there we go i, I accidentally pruned some of the jujube tree but that's a lot of berries see it yeah. Okay, you can stop going recording. forward. I think I'm just going to snip the cu clusters that are real ripe and leave the other ones there. Okay, put those up like here. I'm going to show you something, Brian. Go ahead and put that down and I'm going to show you this. Since this is lower and it's easy for me to snip, come on, babe. I need you. I'm just going to take this. You have to take it, Brian. Don't let it fall. Uh uh, just this one. Right, see, let me show you, show them. See, so we left all of this here. This is my first time harvesting, guys, so you're gonna make some mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Okay, Brian, you wanna put that in there? Mm -hmm. And you come on and get this one right here. So we're not gonna take the whole big cluster. We're only gonna take the ones that are majority ripe. Go ahead. Okay. But I don't want you to drop them because they are so small and delicate, they'll break. Come on. Thank you. Get it right here. Okay. Don't let it fall. Go ahead. You can never eat these raw. They are poisonous until you cook them. Okay? See all of these? Yeah. You see them? The birds got them. See the little bitty twigs there? They got them. And they will come back and they'll get these. So I'm going to take this whole... So they're not poisonous? Not to birds, no. But to humans, they're poisonous. You want to catch animals? it? No. You want to catch it? Yeah. You can capture this. Well, I got all the berries in the sink here, and we're soaking them in medium temperature water, and we're going to go out to the fence, the back fence, and there are some more berries hanging over the fence, and we're going to go get those. Raw elderberries are known to be toxic to humans, but cooking the elderberries releases the toxins in them and make them perfectly safe. And what you have to be safe from is a buildup of cyanide because they contain cyanide in the berries when they're raw. Now, I'm not sure if you heard Brian ask the questions. Well, I love 
for him to ask questions because I know that he's really learning information. He wanted to know if the berries were poisonous to animals. So the answer to that is twofold. Deers, goats, um, large animals, you know, like bears, even squirrels. And birds can eat the leaves and other parts of the elderberry bush, including the berries. However, they it can be toxic to your family pets like dogs, which can cause a, a, a broad range of uh, symptoms. I read that it, it can be vomiting, uh, nauseousness, diarrhea, and even organ failure. So be careful when you have your dogs um, out and around when you're harvesting Okay, now, guys, I'm going to show you how I'm going to extract the juice from the elderberries. It's in this three-part pot where it has a colander. And then uh, the next pot will actually uh, hold the juice. And the bottom is filled with water. I got this root and branches vineyard juice steamer from Amazon. It's all stainless steel. And you must hold the hose down right here, lower, and it has a clamp. I got to go get the box and find it, that you can shut it off. And you'll start seeing the uh, juice fill up in the hole um, as the steam extracts it. And yeah, then you'll just have pure juice. Put the top on here, and you can see that most of the berries are real ripe. That's about half of the berries. And... Like I said, when it comes to a boil, it'll start extracting the juice through steam. This is what it looks like when the juice are flowing from the juicer, steam juicer. Real rich, pure juice. You can hear it squeaking. It's getting to the bottom of it. You can see it slowing down right here. And you can see all of the color has gone from here and now I'm gonna fill it up with the second batch. Okay, so I filled this up again and then I'm gonna check and make sure it doesn't need any more hot water at the bottom. And I'll wait a couple more hours until the juice starts extracting. Okay guys, okay, the second batch of juice is coming out of the juice extractor or juice steamer, whatever you wanna call it. Does that look wonderful? Woo wee! Keep the pot higher than where what where you're putting the juice, so that it can drop down. Because if it don't, you don't do that, it will um, not flow freely. This is beautiful, and you always have to keep checking the bottom here to make sure you have enough water in the steamer. And again, I'm going to let you see what the berries look like when the juice has extracted. All the color goes and away. I tilt this to the side, guys, and I mash it to make sure that I get every drop of juice out of here. And I'll show you a little bit of start flowing. Uh, I think I got it all. I'm mashing and I'm tilting it to the side. That's it. It's trying to get just a few more drops of juice. That's it. Okay, guys, so I have a juice up to here. I forgot how many gallons this is. I'll measure it later, but I'm going to just let it cool off. This is one of the buckets that I make wine in. I just put tape over here so nothing can get inside, and I snap it real good. And I'll be back. Okay, guys, this concludes my short video. In the next video about the elderberry syrup, I'm going to share with you exactly how I make it and I'll give you all or most of the healthy benefits that consuming this syrup will do for you, okay? All right. I hope you found value in this video. You know that I love you and God loves you too. See you real soon.